Hello everyone, so today we are going to be covering the first couple years of the Revolutionary War. In the previous lesson we talked about how circumstances were coming to a head and how violence was um, going to be almost a certainty in the colonies. We did talk about the Revolutionary War, but for today's focus we're going to cover the key events that uh, and battles that set the tone um, in the Revolutionary War um, leading from 1775, so before the Revolutionary War, so not officially a battle of the war, but still a conflict, and going towards uh, 1777. This period in the uh, Revolutionary War was more uh, dire. It was not going super well for the Americans. A lot of casualties. However, you will see the trends show throughout the battles how um, the Americans would be able to rebound eventually in the years in 1778 and eventually leading to uh, the eventual end of the war. Um, in the coming years. But for now, we're going to focus on the more tr uh, troublesome period from 1775 to 1776. And to kick this off, I'm going to ask you guys to um, first give me what is a key event that happened in 1770, in that period of 1775 to 1777. Um, so here on this timeline, I'm going to draw 1775, go all the way down, and then end it, and 1777. So here's my little timeline. So for what's the first date that you might have? So, um, okay, Revol or, uh, signing of the Declaration of Independence would officially kicked off the war. So that would have been uh, right here. 1776, July, and then you can say Declaration of Independence. Okay, any other key battles? Um, so, what about, um, okay, battle for the Bunker Hill. That was a local one right outside of Philadelphia. That was in 1775. So we can put that on our timeline here. Bunker Hill. Okay. So now we have those two dates. Um, okay. Just from the previous class, you remember that the Battle of Trenton, that was 1777. Trenton. Okay. So those are three, you know, good starting off points. I'll show you some kind of basic timeline. For now, I would like you to... Um, Look into your textbook and find the other, at least, we're trying to fill out at least seven to eight important dates in this timeline. Um, okay, so then just take a moment and keep feeding them suggestions about uh, battles that we should list on this key timeline from 1775 to 1777. Okay. Okay, so the timeline is starting to look a lot more full. We've filled in some more battles, such as... Uh, we've got a uh, battle for New York slash Brooklyn. We have the Battle of Trenton, Battle of Saratoga, as well as um, we have the Lexington and Concord. So now, as a group, as a class, I'm going to break you guys up into groups of two to four. Each group is going to get one of these events, one of these critical um, battles, excluding the Declaration of Independence because um, it wasn't a battle. And then I want you to give a detailed analysis of all the different components that make up this event. And so, for example, I would like um, the commanders, who is the leading general of the British and the Americans, all including, as well as were there um, Native American fighting forces on the side? That was something that was very common, as um, the Native Americans were caught in the middle during the Revolutionary War, but their... Um, Involvement is still very important to um, American the end the outcome of the Revolutionary War and some consequences later on So it's important to always include them um, in this affair um, as to, as well as the numbers on each side how strong was each army um, based on manpower uh, artillery if that's information you can find um, By the end of the war how many casualties which side suffered more as a result of the battle um, who was the victor? Who was deemed the victor by the um, outcome? 
um, as well as the information. Uh, we would like information such as time, uh, what was the date, what was the predecessing event before this, what was the next key event after this. So, for example, um, the declar the the signing of the Declaration of Independence was how it happened right before the Battle of New York. Um, so then um, we also, so those are more like baseline simple details that you can find. Um, next, I would like you to include three significant um, or interesting facts about this war, such as um, was this uh, one, for example, was this uh, Alexander Hamilton's first conflict that he was involved with? Just three interesting figures that will help you possibly remember this uh, one battle as being very significant. Um, and also, what, so from the more critical analysis, so there's the three facts, and then, then I want you to think about why was this battle effective towards the overall war effort, or at least the timeline from 1775 to 1777. Um, Based on the outcome and the winner of the war, what did that then lead to further on? Was it a catalyst to inspire people? Was it a, a um, or was it a death blow, or was it did it really hamper one side's war effort for the time being? Um, and for example, I already kind of did this to help you with the lesson. I did this for the. One battle that was not on our timeline but was still important called the Battle of Fort Washington. Um, so, for example, the sides, it was um, George Washington and his 3,000 American soldiers versus William Howe and his 8,000 British soldiers. Um, at the end, the casualties were uh, 155 for George Washington and then 100, or 485 for William Howe. This was a really significant law. Uh, um, and the uh, battle occurred in November 16, 1776. Um, and why was this event so significant is that it was um, a real um, early sh um, bad loss for the Americans as um, the Fort Washington that they were protecting, they had to flee, and as a result, they lost uh, almost 3,000 able-bodied soldiers from the Continental Army. Um, and so that's kind of like what uh, would be an example of what's the significance there about what makes this battle just go from a name on a timeline versus something that actually was a um, very critical event towards the overall effort. Now, okay, so now that you guys have the gist, I'm still open for any questions as you guys go through the process. Um, I'm handing out uh, organizers that can help you just simplify the information that I'm looking for on this. Um, and um, you guys will have 20 to 25 minutes, so pretty much the rest of, almost the rest of class to finish this. Uh, for resources, you're welcome to use the textbook, um, as well as um, online laptops to um, search about these events. Uh, make sure the website that you use are um, .gov. There are some great resources out there, such as, uh, such as battlefields.org, great resource, highly recommended for looking up information about specific battles. Um, and then at the end of class, this won't be long, just a short minute to three minute presentation. I would like one, I would like the group to come up and then one representative of the group to talk about their battles. Um, we might run out of time on this, but it'll be okay. We'll just finish it up in the next class. But um, you essentially are going to be teaching the rest of the class your specific event that your group is assigned. Um, so if you have Bunker Hill, you're going to be a, a little expert for teaching about uh, the Battle of Bunker Hill. Okay? And if you have any questions, I'll be here throughout the lesson walking around. All right. So thank you, everybody, for sharing your um, information about the individual battle that you had. Uh, now to close the lesson and for... Uh, Reflection tonight, I would like everybody to take one of the battles that was not the one that was for their group and to write a three to five page um, journal entry about why it was important and then how it affected the overall war effort. This is just a short little reflection about something that wasn't what you covered, but will keep
keep you thinking about the overall uh, Revolutionary War from 1775 to 1777. Uh, and also make sure that you um, you uh, keep your graphic organizers about the events and then use them for our further lessons in the future.